and welcome back to Temple Boy Turnings. I am Steve and this is episode two of Learning Sphere Art. Episode one, we made this 90 millimeter sphere or ball and we also learned how to make all the, uh, the templates and even a jig that held this ball so that we could turn it. If you head back to uh, episode one, it will be, uh, be up here somewhere and uh, just click the link and you can go and find out how we got to this stage and uh, how we made all the little tools required for getting to this stage. In this episode, we are going to make a donut chuck or a sphere chuck that's going to hold this in a position that we can turn some holes and designs into it. Um, it's the next stage in the art process and uh, we're going to learn how to make that jig right now. So these are the uh, parts that you're going to need to make this donut chuck or sphere jig. This is our sphere. You're going to need a face plate. This is a spare face plate that I have that's going to be big enough for making this. Now if you don't have a spare face plate you can make one out of uh, plywood or hardwood board that you have and uh, you can uh, put it into a chuck. It's just ideal if you have a face plate. You're going to need a scrap piece of plywood for making a template. You're going to need two pieces of wood. One piece needs to be big enough obviously for the diameter of your sphere. So in this case, for our 90 millimeter sphere, I've got a piece of stock wood that is 140 millimeters square. This particular piece is in around 90, 90 millimeters deep. Now we're only going to be going half the depth of the ball into this. So in theory, we're only going to be going 45 millimeters into, into this piece of wood. So we've got plenty of uh, room there to take the screws. So when we're screwing this on, we've got plenty of depth to put some decent screws into this to hold it and still have enough room for our sphere to go into the jig. So make sure you've got plenty of depth, at least at least the depth of your full sphere because half of it will be going into it. And then you're going to need a cap to go on top that's going to be screwed on, that's going to have a hole, so forming the donut. This is just a piece of plywood. It is a 12 millimeter ply or just, um, just under half inch ply. Um, it's good strong plywood. You could use MDF or any kind of strong board. Uh, and obviously that's cut to the same size as our um, stock piece that we're going to use for the main jig. Okay, that's that. And then obviously you're going to need screws for putting all this together. Uh, there's four for holding the, the top of the jig on. You'll see all this later on. And then you need however many screws that are going to hold your face plate to the, to the stock. In this case it's eight screws. You're going to need your good compass, again, steel ruler or a good tape measure, and your pencil. Okay, let's go through this. So first of all, we need to determine the center of our jig blank. And we all know how to do that. Corner to corner, corner to corner. This finds our center. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same the other side. And there we go. And just on one side, I'm going to put a little divot in the center. The other side obviously is going to be on the face plate. Turn it over. You want to make sure that you've got a pretty good flat surface for your face plate. And then we're going to screw the face plate to the center. 
Now my face plate is just slightly bigger than my um, than my jig stock, but I'm not too worried about that because we're going to be well away from the uh, the face plate. There you go. I have all but one screw in. It's always a good idea when you're doing this to take note of the length of your screw. This is going to be going in around about 25 millimeters or an inch into my piece of wood. Okay, we'll screw the last one in. Turn our jig to the side and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from the edge of our stock, not from the face plate, we're going to measure that 25 millimeters in, or one inch. And we're going to mark it all the way around the blank. And there you go. So we have a line 25 mil or one inch in. Even though it's a few millimeters longer or further in than our screw is actually going to be. It gives us a reference of how much we can bore out from this blank without actually hitting the screws. That always protects your screws. I always like to do that whenever I'm using a face plate so that I know exactly where my screws are. Okay, next step is we're gonna put this on the lathe and we're gonna turn this round. Okay, so I have the face plate onto the lathe I've just brought my tail stock up just to give it that little bit of extra support, uh, just to take the pressure off the screws. And we have our reference line so we know where we are. All we're gonna do for now is the back portion here, where it's marked, we're just gonna turn it to just above the width of the face plate, just so that we're taking this corner off really. And then the front section here, we're gonna turn down to round. So there we are. We're round at the front there now. We want to just check we're at 120 millimeters there at the front, which is perfect. So there we go. That is the outside part of our jig done. Next stage now is that we're going to make a template to use when we hollow this out to hold the sphere. All right, so we have our piece of plywood. This is just four mil plywood. And what I need to do now is I just need to draw a circle, which is the same diameter as our sphere. So, so our sphere is 90 millimeters. I need to uh, put a radius of 45 millimeters on my compass. Now you need this to be as accurate as possible. And then we're gonna draw our circle onto our plywood. There we go. Next we need to draw a line straight through the center of our circle across this way. So we're finding the halfway mark between the circle. Now I know that this is pretty square, the edge of this, so I'm gonna square a line down this way through the center line. That's the center coming vertically. Now I need a center line horizontally from that. And just like in um, episode one, I'm gonna find a distance greater than my radius. Doesn't matter how much more. And I'm gonna put it on the point where the center line we just drew meets the circle. And I'm gonna draw an arc and an arc. And then I'm going to drop down to the bottom and do the same at the point where the two lines meet and do an arc 
and arc. And then I'm going to go through the three points. So it's the two points where the arc meets this side and this side and then through the center point. And that gives us our horizontal line through the center. Next we need to measure down 25 millimeters. From the center line, 25 milli millimeters down, and we need to draw another line parallel to our horizontal line. There you go. We then need to go from the edge of the circle and measure 25 millimeters either side, like so. And square those lines down. And the section we need is this piece. So we're going to go over to the scroll saw and just cut that template out. Now when we're cutting this out we need to be as accurate as possible. We need this radius to be perfectly cut. There we go. One template ready for hollow it out. Okay, so our next stage now is that we need to hollow this out so half of our sphere will be sunk into this jig and it will be the perfect size to hold the ball nice and tight. That's what this template is for. This is exactly half the depth that we need to go in so that half the ball will be sticking out of the jig by the time we've got it inside there. And now it's just a matter of hollowing this out so that our template sits in there nice and snug. Now before we start, take your compass, have it set to the radius of your sphere. If you want to just check that, you can put it to the center point of your template and just make sure that it's just touching the edge. Put it into the center of your piece and draw yourself a reference circle on your front face. This will stop you going too far out. You don't you want to stay within this circle now. And then your template will fit in there nicely. Now, we're not going to go any deeper yet. We're going to bring our hollow in just to the very edge of the line. We're going to leave the pencil line there. And then we're going to face off the front and sand the front so that it's nice and flat. There you go. We still have just slight pencil marks showing there. Now I'm going to scrape this front surface just to clear off the rough part and then I have this sanding block, it's just a block, a block of wood, any piece of wood and I have, uh, that's 180 grit, just stuck to the board just with a bit of double side tape and I'll use that as a flat face just to sand that nice and flat, ready for our uh, plywood to sit flush on there. Okay, that's just taken off the rough face that was on there. And now we're just going to hold our board on this flat as we sand. And 
And there we go. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And there we go. That's fitting in there nice and tight. I have to push it quite hard to get it to go in. And it's nice and tight, the whole dome that's cut out inside there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get our sphere and see if it just pops in there nice and tight and see do we need to just do any slight adjustments. Take our square, put it to the front face of the, of the sphere or ball. Take a measurement from the front to the edge of our square. And there we go, we're 45 mil. We're just slightly over 45 mil, but well, that's good. I'm happy with that. That's holding the ball nice and tight. We could even spin that. And that sphere is turning in there nice and true. And now we've just got to make our end cap. Okay, so our next stage is we need to find the, sh the size of our front plate, which is going to fit on the front of our jig here. Now we know that our outside diameter here is 120 millimeters. We're going to find the center of our piece of wood by going corner to corner. These lines are also going to be reference lines for our screw holes in just a second. So we're going to take a measurement of 60 millimeters, which is half of 120. Take our compass, put it to the center, and draw our 120 millimeter diameter circle, like so. We then need to reset our compass to 45 millimeters, which will give us a diameter of 90, which is our sphere. And which is also the same size as the hollow that we've turned into this and we draw another circle there we go that then gives us the width of our rim on the front of our jig and it also gives us four reference points here 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 and here that we can drill four holes for the screws that are going to hold the front plate on. There you go. Now we can take our disc and we can line it up on the back near enough where we want to be and we can put our four screws in. Now these are quite long screws, they're 40 mil or an inch and a half long and we can screw them in. One, two, three, four. Now you want that so it's as tight to the side as possible that's that's lovely that's really pulled that in nice and tight now we're going to clean up this edge and we're going to turn the center away and as we clean up on the inside edge of this donut on the front we're going to follow the contour of the sphere inside so that it still keeps the shape of the sphere Okay, 
okay that's the outside turned I'm just going to rub a bit of sandpaper over that just to take any rough edges it doesn't have to be super smooth but just to take any sharp edges away from it that's fine and now we're going to hollow it out So you want to just stop about 5mm short of your 90mm uh, mark that you have there. Don't go any further than that and you want to hollow the centre out and then start working back so that you can continue the, the spherical shape inside. Okay, so we're almost there, we've just got a slight lip on the inside there. Just take a small bit more off on the inside, don't take any more on the outside, we're not going to take any more on the outside here. We're just going to turn this flush now on the inside, keeping the spherical shape coming round, and that's it, no more off the front edge here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to sand that up now. Just take any rough edges off. Sand this front edge so it's not too sharp. And that should be our chuck ready. There you go, that should be ready. We'll just try our spear in there now. Now before we take this front plate off, we want to do some reference marks so that we're all lined up again when we put it back on. So, we want to number these screws. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. And then where, number screw, where screw number one is, Want to just draw a line at the very top, like so. And just where the two pieces join, we can put like an arrow mark on the two pieces so that we know that that's where we line up. Just to make sure we don't lose that mark, we can put it in permanent black marker like so. We now have a reference mark to know exactly where that goes back. I can take this off now. That's our front ring. I like to take just the sandpaper and just rub any little frays that we got off there just to make sure everything's smooth and we'll just offer the sphere up into the into the chuck like so bring our ring to the front line up our marks just get the opposites you can go opposite screws get them started. Don't tighten them all the way up. Get all four screws started. And we can just... You want to tighten this up as even as you can. There you go. That now has our sphere nice and tight. That should run nice and true. Lovely, there's no wobble on that at all. It's a nice, accurate.
accurate jig for when we start doing some artwork. And there you go. One donut chop for our 90 millimeter or three and a half inch sphere. Or if you want the fancy term, hemispherical chuck. <laughs> but that's, that's pretty much it guys. What you can do and what we will do when we go ahead and use this on the next video is we will put just a little bit of the rubber padding on the inside just to protect the front face of the sphere and uh, we're good to go. Pretty simple, ready just to screw straight back onto the, onto the lathe again. Episode 3, we'll be seeing how to use this. We'll also be learning how to mark out the sphere for six equally spaced reference points. I'll do the same again with this video. Uh, in the descriptions below you'll see the timestamps with the different sections on the video that you can just click to and jump straight to those reference points. Uh, I hope that's helped you. Let me know how you get on with that. Please like, share and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. That's it guys. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you again soon for episode three. Bye bye.